Welcome to Extreme Jigging Techniques. Greenlee Island makes a beautiful backdrop for our anchorage and a base for Crusader II and Why Not Fishing Charters. It's only an hour steaming from Port Lincoln and quite apart from offering safety, there's plenty of good fishing here too. For big fish action and deep water jigging we plan to visit Rocky Island, an exposed rock island to the southwest of Greenlee. The reefs around Rocky are home for some of the biggest Samsons in Australia and offer remote and exciting jigging. Nice fish. like a big silver trolley, but... I'd say this is a Samson show. Yeah, I reckon the Deb's got a Samson. And the Deb's got on. It's a nice fish, whatever it is. It is, good fish. Go Deb! <laughs> big current out here, Shane. We changed it over to 400 gram jigs. Yeah, I think... a little bit light on the yeah, uh, need... Saltiga 4500s, but <laughs> yeah. they work. Yeah. I reckon I've got a mid-sized groper here. Small, small to mid groper, I'd say. Meter off the bottom in 60 metres of water, so good fight. Welcome to the world of deep water jigging. That rod's good. Oh, they're great rods. Nice rod. You won't break it. This is a good effort on a 4500 and what's really a light jig stick. It does look big. He's big. He's big. Welcome to the world of deep water jigging. <laughs> what do you think, Deb? First fish? Fun. First big drop. This is and lovely. you'll smash them. This is a lovely fish. Isn't yeah. It? To Samson, it's a very, very nice one. 60 metres on anchor, big tide running. This is a 30 odd kilo fish too, yeah. so a really big fish. This is a great effort for the first fish. This is what it's all about. And it's about to happen right now. You got that leader on, Deb? You got yeah, him. that's the way, big leaders there. You got him, Deb. Got him? <laughs> 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 <You're beauty. laughs> what a ripper. What was that? <laughs> How's this? 30 kilo, 30. <laughs> that's 30 kilos of fish, well done. Oh my God. Now that, Shane, yeah, mate. you can come over here and tell us what all this is about, but that is one awesome fish. That's a Samson, I reckon he's about 27, 28 kilos, about yeah. 60 pounds. Good on you, Deb. I thought you were going to hold it. You're out of energy, are you? You're going to hold it, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. That's a great fish. <laughs> on the big knife, in the knife jig, about a first or second jig too, and I'll just hit the bottom, bang, girl. Oh, oh, I've had about enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to tell you. <laughs> One of the big problems in deep water jigging is uh, current chain, and we're currently fishing in about what, four, four, four or five four knots or five of current. Knots. So yeah, you've got the big 60 move. metres of water. Yeah, you've got to use a heavy jig and get it down quick so the you current do. doesn't grab, the, grab yeah. the line and make a big bow in it. I'm using a 400 gram jig yep. here. 500s are not all that common in no. Australia. In New Zealand there's a lot of 500 gram jigs. I mean that's... Um, it's a lot of weight. 16 ounces <laughs> in the old of, scale. It's that a lot of weight. Half, that's, yeah, half a kilo. Yeah. I've hit bottom. Unlike kingfish, Samson's won't follow you all the way to the top. No, I usually jig it. Which about, makes it hard work. I jig about the first yeah. 20 metres off the bottom, then drop it back again. You do. Yep. That, just in this current, you end up with your lure. That's right. You've got to bring it all the way up, way up down, and drop it again. Halfway down, out, out, out. So you've got to bring it all the way back anyway, yep. which is a... Keeps you fit. <laughs> yeah. If you're jigging properly in this sort of conditions, you've got to have a lay down after about 15 minutes. 
One little trick that I find too that extends my ability to jig for longer periods is get one of the uh, you know tennis racket grips or squash racket yep. grip. Covers up your 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 um, real seat. Your real seat rings. A lot more comfortable on the hand. Well, a lot of people wear gloves because they you can get blisters, but with a thread line, it's sort of you don't need a glove on your left hand. No. Well, Bill, I like to I like to use baits as well as jigs. If we've got seven or eight anglers, I like to have a couple of baits down there. Yep. And then the smell from the baits generally attracts the smaller fish, and the samplings come in, and then it's open slather on the jigs. But it's always a good idea to have one or two baits. And if you've got liveies, even better. Yeah. There's a typical 400 gram jig. This is just a simple gillies jig. Probably not one of the most uh, advanced jigs made, um, but boy, it gets down in this, in this quick current. And, and I mean, it's purpose need, built for what it does, and need, we're having real need. problems getting to the bottom here. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, we'll see how we go. Yep. Bait versus jig, see what happens first. Rocky Island in the background off the South Australian coast. Yep. Next stop and south on, is Antarctica. And this is one of the best Samson fish reefs in the in the country. Yep. You know, they, they make a big deal about the you know the, the heaps they catch off right in this island. They do get plenty, but they seem to forget about South Australia. We get some monsters here too, Bill. Kings and Samsons. They don't get kings in WA, but we get plenty of those here. We do, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I've got a big angry animal on the other end here. A big angry animal on, on, on either end, I reckon. I don't know what this is. This could, this could be another sh school shark, I don't know, but uh, it's big and it's heavy. Hasn't really made any powerful runs like a Samson would, but it's a nice, it's a nice fish, whatever it is. It's giving me plenty now. <laughs> Go from one side of the boat to the other. <laughs> Try on the big head shakes around there. I'm not going to call what this is. Half thinking shark, half fishing Samson fish. Uh, I guess we won't know till we see him. Oh. Ah, it's a sambo, I think. Yes, yeah, Samson. Right, we'll spear him in. And he's gone. In these southern waters, there is always the opportunity for a bit of trolling, and southern bluefin tuna are always happy to oblige. Southern bluefin tuna, we thought to be almost on the brink of extinction back in around the turn of the new millennium, but now they seem to be coming back harder and stronger than ever. This is February, we don't usually see tuna out here off Coffin Bay till March, April, and there are literally acres of them. They vary in size from little guys, eight or 10 kilos up to about 40 odd. And uh, they're sure great fighting fish. I've got one on eight kilo here, so I've got to be a little bit careful. But uh, yeah, it seems like a reasonable fish. Come over the top of me.
Play some big fish. Big good fish. After a hard and hot fishing session like that, it was great to get back on Anchorage at Greenlee and prepare for another crack at East Rocky and possibly some early morning tuna. Lenny, can you get Dave going backwards? He's got a spool, Brett, here. Hang on, hang on. Jeez, Brett, that's taking a lot of line, that fish. Could be one of the bigger ones, I think. Oh. Now he's coming at you, you've got to keep that slack up. Is that like a good one? Yeah, mate. He's taking a lot of line, he's taking three quarters of the spool. Look, there's 400 metres of line on there, he's taking three quarters of it in the first run. That's the thing about the bluefin out here, they vary in size from little guys, five kilos right up to 30 and sometimes 40. So it's a bit of a hot muck situation, you never know what size fish is going to jump on, so you've got to have the right tackle. And I'll tell you, this is one of the better ones for sure. Now these, uh, if this is one of the 25 kilo fish, like I suspect, it'd take about half an hour to land it, so. It's got a bit of sea on, it's pushing the boat away from the fish as well, so it's got to be patient, you can't put too much on. Starting to tire now. Brett's starting to win, and he's probably got three quarters of the line back. Got a fairly heavy wind-on leader here, so when, once he gets the fish at the back of the boat, it, the leaders on the reel he can control the fish fairly well. So that's important. You need heavy leader. So when they've got the fish 20 metres down, you can put some hurt on them and drag them up because they're stubborn things. Bluefin lately has been around about oh, 15 to 20 kilos, but occasionally you get one 40 to 60. They tend to be out in the shelf though. Here at Rocky Island, it's probably about 50 to 80 metres in depth, but it's still about probably a good 30 nautical miles from the shelf, so none of the big fish seem to get in here as yet. I suspect this one will be about a 20 kilo job. But boy, even on 50, this 
one is putting up a good dogged fight down deep. The idea was putting the 50 out, get the fish in quick. And I tell you what, I reckon Leah, Leah on the 10 kilo outfit is probably going to beat this thing in. Got be a good fish, Bill. I don't know, mate. Maybe I'm getting uh, weak in my old age. <laughs> well, how's that, Jane? What's that? Leah's beating me in. How do you feel? You're on 24, she's on 10. Um, Leah, come over the come over the side. Yeah, I'll come over the top. We'll swap over. Awesome. That's a nice fish. That's a nice, a lovely fish. All right, there's the letter you got. Whoop! Let it go. Let it go. Hold that. Do you want to hold the letter for? You? Nice fish. Hold it. Nice fish. That's the biggest one of the trip. Biggest fish of the trip. Oh, well done. That's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Magnificent fish. How exciting. That's 25, 25 kilos, that fish. 50, 55 pounds. Won't be liftable. Small one. Bow look. Yeah. What did you think of that, Leah? Unbelievable, wasn't it? And look at this. My fish? Your fish. Oh no. How does that work out? 24 kilo. 24 kilo outfit. And look at the shirt. Is the shirt stuff or what? And does she care? Not at all. We'll have to keep both these fish now. Mine's been foul hooked, so that's terminal. And it looks like yours headed for the sashimi table as well. So they'll be the two fish we keep for the day and the others will tag and release. Good on you. So after that tuna session, we anchored again at Rocky Island, looking for more deep jigging action. Big current, probably one of the hardest, deepest, fastest reefs you can fish in the country. It is. It's not always like this. The current, sometimes sometimes you can unload yeah. a bait down. But okay. Today, big current. Yeah. 400, 500 gram jigs. Yep. I'm going to go standard with a knife jig. What are you going to use? I use one of the squidgy fish. Blue okay. Water, blue water live baits. On Plus a, a weight. Because an Oster rig. Double hook rig. Uh, looks good to me, Bill. If I was a Samson fish, I'd eat that, wouldn't you? Yeah. And the extra weight because of the current running at four knots. That's right. This is extra hard work. Sure is. Yeah, I mean, jig is hard work at any time, but when yeah. you've got three, four knots of current to contend with. Brett's on. On the livey. On the livey straight away. See when it hits the bottom. Maybe. <laughs> you will on this. I've got um, P8 on this. What's that? Yeah, just bottom now. You 80, see it just stop? Yeah, P8's normally 80 pound. P660, P440. Yeah. But they, it, they um, do vary a bit. to a line diameter yeah, rather right. than a breaking strain. Certainly the most active form of fishing I've done, or do. You do it properly for 10 minutes, you've got to have a break. You do, yeah. Trouble is you do it for 10 minutes, then you get to hook a big fish. <laughs> well, we've got, we've got about eight people on the boat, and you can't have eight jigging at once down the stern, so it's good to break it up Do it anyway. in shifts. Do it in shifts, yeah. Japanese-style jigging technique. Yep. One rip, one wine. That's one it. One rip, That's one it. wine. Yep. Rip, wine, rip, wine. 
tough, but it's the way to do it. Yeah. And the quicker you can do it, the better. At the bottom. I haven't picked you up, have I, Bill? No, I don't think so. Just get out of your way and drop it down again. I can feel someone else's line here. No, nah, we're right. <laughs> well, I might give you guys a break. One too many jigs down there at the moment. Good luck. Thanks, Bill. Keep at it. Go make us a cup of coffee. Well, Dave, Rocky Island, iconic South Australian blue water fishing location. It is, it is. As you know from your own experiences, Shane, coming out here with other boats and uh, fishing over the years, there's some fantastic fishing to be had out here. Not only the Samsons, which is one of the target species, it gives you a good fight, but kingfish, sharks, blue groper, tuna abound around the place. It really is a great fishing. And what about that blue moor? How's that <laughs> yesterday? And when we're talking kingfish, we're talking not just your rat kingfish, no. up to 40 kilos. No, 40 kilos. And that's a monster of a kingfish. Oh, yeah. They really are the big ones. World class kingfish. Yeah. Well, mate, we caught a couple of nice Samsons and, and groper and a few other bits and pieces, but you're telling me we've got another ground untried, about 15 miles to the west. Virgin yep. Territory? It is, it is. It's a ground that uh, we've never visited before, but uh, we've heard a lot about it and we're keen to have a look at it. And so it's a perfect condition today just to gently cruise down there, do some lunch on the way, have a pleasant day out there and then um, see what happens. It's, uh, as you say, a new territory for us. We've never fished there before, but that's part of the magic of doing this, going to grounds that it you is. don't know what's going to hold. Well, mate, fire up the big turbo diesel okay. and we'll get out of here. Let's do it. As the boat goes down the wave, take advantage of the slack rope and just pull it in hard. better cameraman than I am a fisherman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, here we are, Shane. We've made the big drive. Way west of Rocky. Have a look at this coming up here. Yeah, just from a flat 100 metres, it's, uh, it's risen, risen up to in the mid-70s. Yeah. And there's just fish life all over those peaks there. Virgin territory, mate. Probably never been a line dropped here before. Have a look at the fish there. We've got 70 metres there now. Mm. Fish all over it. Look at that. The amount of fish there is just unbelievable. Yeah. On the top there. There's a lot of high stuff there. Yeah, there's a few re big red blobs there, so yeah. I think it could be a case of hang on and <laughs> see what Give it happens. Give it a go. Yeah. It certainly looks good. I'm excited about this. It could be interesting. <laughs> it could be very interesting. Oh, ready! The king! Yeah, the king! King! Oh. I would say it's another kingfish. That was right on the bottom, Len. Not a big fish. Feels like it's going like a big. It's not one of those big Samsons. Got colour. Oh. Right on the bottom. Nice king. Not huge. No, no, we'll just. Yeah, we might. Get a shot there. 
What a beauty. He's a good king. Probably, probably about eight kilos. 70 metres of water right on the bottom. First jig. I think we'll let this guy go. See if we can't get something bigger. What a great fish. Oh, I got a Samson. That's a lovely eight kilo Samson. On the jig. What a great fish. Yeah, let him go. Samson fish, mate. <laughs> How well did he go? Yeah, pretty well. They pull a bit, they pull a bit don't they? Yeah, a bit. Especially in deep water. Nice fish, he's about 20 kilos. Lovely fish. And we're going to put him back, but first we're going to put a tag in him. I'll just put the tag in up here. And someone catches him again. Yeah. So nice when you're fish. Australia. Spear him, go over there and just push him head first. Well, Bill, we've done the big steam from Rocky Island out west. We've seen the echo sound of screen, which looks absolute dynamite. Done two drifts over it. <laughs> We've got a few. <laughs> got a few fish. I've got a feeling, just a sneaking feeling, that's going to be a mind-boggling yeah. jigging session. Well, we're dropping the dropping the pick down now. We've had two drifts over it. We've caught kingfish, Samson, Samson fish, fish big Samson fish, probably, oh, 20, I don't 20, know, 20, 20 kilos. kilos. Um, kings, which are really promising because you normally don't get both Very Samson unusual fish and to kings find them together. On the same route, so, this is virgin territory. I've got a feeling. <laughs> We should wrap this up very quickly because we've got a lot of fishing to do. Yeah, you just wait and see. I think it'll be sensational. First drop, and Lenny and I both hooked up. Shane's hooked up. Deb's hooked up. Everyone's hooked up. So these are kings. They're knocking up pretty quick on the heavier gear. But then again, we're about 75 metres down. We've got one, two, three, five hooked up at the moment. So things are a little bit hectic. We've got colour here, this one. Yep. Little Sambo. Got it yourself, mate? Yep. Another little Sambo here. Little Samson fish. Down from about 70 metres on a speed jig. Right up. Getting a bit hectic here. I think I'll be taking one of these double hook double hooks off. Lovely little Samson fish. Let that one go. There we go. First drop down, five fish. I think they're all Samson fish, I'm not sure. We got kings on the first pass. We're anchored up now, so have to wait and see. I'll give you the drum. Probably a lot easier not to run two hooks. I'll be taking one off, I think. This is your first fish on the jig, Leah? Yes. <laughs> the little sandboat. Look at that. Nice. 
What a great fish. How's that? Chrome jig. Very good. You grab hold of that. Gives you a bit of a workout, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, definitely. <laughs> there you go. Tuck it in. Yep, head first. Beautiful. Oh, I just got hit halfway up. Shane's on. You on? Halfway up. Yeah, that's where I got hit too. Oh, king. King. Just go under your shame. Yeah, halfway up. Well, I just got hit about halfway up, which winding in to check the gear and I got hit halfway up. Shark? Shark? No. Little Samson, I reckon. It's unusual to yeah. follow up that far. Yeah, isn't it? I guess we we're drifting fairly quick, it's just sort of lifted off the bottom a bit, so... Sam's on. It's not very big, this fish at all. Started off big, it's got smaller. Smaller Samson fish I've ever caught. <laughs> this is a good king. There's action of plenty here, they're gone nuts. This is a good kid, about 10 kilos. Took me halfway up. 300, 300 gram jig. This is a great fish. Good on you, mate. Chris was the first to be hooked up and the last to bring it in, so it's either a big fish or it's been foul hooked. Wait, it's going right up in the top. Could be foul hooked, Chris. Big weight. There's a bit of size there though. You can see him slide the surface. There is a bit of size there. Wow. Yep. And that's why that took so long, Chris. With the exploratory trip to this new ground over, we left late in the day and again returned to Greenlee Island. The promise of a great day's fishing on the unexplored reef tomorrow will make sleep difficult. Nothing's changed since yesterday. No. 
Have a look at that structure there, the heavy bottom and the fish just all over the top. Yeah. Individual big fish here, schools of smaller ones there. Basically unexplored, obviously hasn't been fished too much. And all this, all this green here, David, is yeah. a fish? That's right, we're seeing a huge uh, congregation of fish here. When we first got here we weren't too sure what they were, but we could see some very prominent, very much more solid red shapes in there, which we uh, assumed were predators, hopefully Samson's and Kings, and that's what it turned out to be. Well, we had about a two hour shot at them yesterday, just drifting, and just today, yep. today we're going to anchor, spend about six hours on them, and according to you blokes, try to get a hundred fish in a day. Catch and release, of course. Catch and release, yeah. yeah. But it's good, a hundred metres of water there, up to about 70, yeah. so it's a sub substantial rise. And yeah. Great chigging spot. And you guys are going to try a couple of live baits for some bigger fish. All sorts, don't you worry about that. Okay, we'll see what we get on the jigs. <laughs> and as, as we're talking now, we've got the <laughs> tuna, tuna, tuna jumping yeah. up in the front of the boat. Of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is this paradise? It's temptation, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, let's get this anchor down and get into them. Okay, okay. good. Tackle for deep water jigging shame, where it all began. The Daiwa Saltiga 4500. Yep. And a uh, matching Saltiga 64 rod. Been around for a long time, still yep. a great reel, but things have leapt ahead in, in giant steps, haven't they? Yeah, and one of the guys is still using one of these on uh, on this trip. Moved on now to the uh, S Extreme 6400. Yep. Beautiful, uh, with a beautiful reels. Rod. Beautiful reels. And the new, the new rod that matches with it is, a, is an absolute ripper. The, um, whoops, the Combo 64. Perfectly balanced, the real major go with the rod. Yep. Meant to Better handle, built for Australia. Made what to fish 50 pound there? braid. Well, this is back back to the original here. This is my uh, 6000. Been around for a while now, caught a lot of fish. I know a Wilson live fibre jig stick. Yep. And Bit the braid, of a must add, looks 50 like. pound, uh, sorry, 80 pound mustard braid. Good, okay. good line, holds about 300 metres, which is perfect. Okay. Into the Z series for the um, overheads. Which is one of my rods. New 600 Extreme uh, with P6 on it. Some um, people prefer an overhead, others prefer the Yeah, I've actually like. got an overhead and I've got the new 6500 um, Australian built Extreme as well on matching rod uh, and a bit of a racket grip too. So that's the stop your hands from blessing? Well, I, I find with this one the um, the real seat um, rings are on the top of the rod. You dig in your hand a bit. Oh, they dig in your hand, but they loose, they can loosen oh, up. Oh, okay. So I just wrap them up, yep. so you can't you know yep. loosen them up during the fight, and it sits a little bit better for jigging as well. And you notice that every one of these rods and reels has a wind on leader, which is just about yep. mandatory for this sort of fishing. Yeah. Japanese style jigging, Daiwa, um, obviously Shimano, Shimano as well. As well. Um, there's a couple of seed blanks here, which are very very popular. Yep. Um, from uh, Japan, uh, this one's on a, what's that, on a Z40, Z40. Daiwa, yep. uh, and then we've got Jeez. Graphite USA few bucks from America. Worth of, few bucks worth of tackle on the table. Oh, it'll it'll probably be, I don't know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to even think about it. <laughs> Approaching 20,000 I'd say. Yeah. Mm. We'll go into um, lures and how to rig them a bit later. Everyone here is using wind on leaders. I know that um, a lot of the guys use, uh, use various knots. Um, I find, I think, I'll show you the wind on leader system the that I the use, system and I think they're by far the best, can't go wrong. No, better. So let's grab a rod or two and see if we can get into a fish. I'm with you. So Leah, what gear are you using? I'm using a, a Saltiga 6 foot 4 jig rod with a 4500 Saltiga high speed reel. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoying yourself?
We're onto a big pod of little Samson fish here, anchored up in 60 metres. Average Samson fish probably about five kilos, like this one. And at the moment, it's one after the other, from 10 metres down to 60, all over the shop. I'm looking around the boat. Two guys have got tangled up like you wouldn't believe, but down, down the port side of the boat here, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, one just came in, five people hooked up at once. And these are a beautiful fish too. Distributed around, well, South Australia through to Western Australia. None in Victoria, unfortunately. Kingfish tend to take over in Victoria. But then they are distributed back up to uh, Coffs Harbour in New South Wales and beyond. Just a great fish. Look entirely different to a, a yellowtail kingfish too. What we'll try to do a bit later on is get both fish so we can show you the difference between the Samson fish and the yellowtail kingfish. Alright, well, I think I'll let this one go. Away he goes. As you can see now, just about every drop we're getting one of these smaller Samsons. That's a better fish maybe. They say they definitely don't go as hard as a king, but I've got P6 on this, which is about 60 pounds. See the guys, whoops, guys are putting a few live baits in there to try to nail a few bigger ones. I personally don't like their luck getting a bait down. Whoops, what a good fish! There's a pot of them down there, like you wouldn't believe. Chris has got one here, all about the same. There's plenty of drag on this one, it's still pulling line. Smallest one so far for the day. Rigging jigs when we're fishing, I rig them up, Shane, with a um, swivel crimp to the end of the 150 yep. and a pair of split ring pliers. So change the lures so you don't have to tie a knot. I just simply open up the split ring. Open up the split ring. Slide one off. And slide slide one, one off. off. And the new rig, new rig that you want to use. It's simply a matter of. Um, That's pretty secure and simple. It doesn't take long. Sliding him off again. Yeah. Saves you tying knots or crimping every time, and you just rig all your um, all your jigs up with uh, split rings. And the important thing is you're not using a snap tool. I hate using snaps on jigs. Oh, you can't use snaps on these. Right, yeah. So that's yeah. foolproof, positive way to do it. Got to use. I use wind on leaders, but uh, there are other systems that you can use. But I find wind on leaders are by far the yep. best. Twenty foot long for these big deep reefs here and these big fish. And uh, yeah, crane or a, quite often on the heavier P P8. I'll use a ball bearing swivel. And you're using two assist hooks on this jig? Yeah, this one has got two. I just grabbed it out of the bag there. Most of the time I only use the one. Um, but this one, yeah, we're using a two. You don't run one off the bottom at all? Never run them off the bottom. Always at the top. 
Um, I think these fish tend to bite at the head, and the head is the part that's got moving forward yep. or up. Yep. So you're always pulling from here. They they actually put the eye on on the uh, on the jig up up the top. They're always attacking head first, so that's why you put the hooks there. The old style of jigging. We used to use undertakers and treble hooks down the bottom, and we know what that was Undertaker, like. You must be as old as I am, but undertakers yeah, well, back in the Irons yeah. days. Yeah. This is new Japanese style jigging, totally different. Yep. And uh, boy, oh boy, does it work. Oh, yeah. And there we go, number eight for me, back in the drink. 20 minutes, eight fish. There's 10 of us on the boat, so we could be up to about 60 fish already, I think. The goal's 100, I guess. We have had fish to 30 kilos. We've had kingfish, yellowtail kingfish, but this at the moment is just Samson's. Yeah. Hit, hit. And again, number nine, that's better. That's a much better fish. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, that's got a bit more weight on it. This is probably a little bit bigger, bigger than average, but we're sort of knocking them up pretty hard on this. 60 pound. One thing I like about these jigging rods, these short five foot six jigging rods, they're much more parabolic and brings the fighting fulcrum much closer to your body. So the days of when I used to use rock hard butt rods and fast action, really leave it right out. These new Japanese style jig rods are, I think you've got me there, Lynn. Hang on, slow down. Where are we, lift up. I'm under you. Right up. <laughs> You've given Lynn a workout. Now he's running, they're a little bit better, these two, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, much better fish. This is a better fish. A little bit better. It's probably about six, seven kilos, that one. And don't they pull hard. I'll let this one go. Number nine. It's starting to pull a bit harder now. We'll get the lure out of this one and get it away as well. That's number 10 for me and I think I should have a break. I'll be accused of hogging the Number four. Number four. Not, what are you doing? We've got to get ten. I've got a four pound line here, a rubber tail, and uh, I'm not terribly confident, but uh, hey, you don't do it, you don't, don't try, you don't, you don't try it out. So hang on here. It's only a light rubber tail, too, so I Oh, something's got it. Oh. On. on and in trouble. I think I'm in strife. 
No line. Line all gone. Small. And you. No. <laughs> all gone. Sorry, no. Yeah, See you later. Can you start taking it seriously again now? <laughs> Why am I not surprised, Shane? <laughs> Maybe small, but they really pulled hard. Now we can't catch a Samson. I think we got up to 80, 85 Samson fish yeah. going for the ton. Uh, they've moved out. The they've moved out in. and the kings have moved in. Well, it's not all that often, Bill, that we find these two species together. So that's a Samson fish. And a yellowtail kingfish. Seriola hippos here and Seriola oh, lalandi over there. Closely related and they're both ton tough sons of guns, I can tell you. Just hold it up sideways, Shane, put the two together because they really are quite different. They are. Aren't they? Yeah. Have a look at that. Yeah, they're they're really... But, uh, yeah, you're Samson right. fish below, really a paler with darker mottled charcoal spots on it or yeah, blotches. Big, big sloping forehead, and, forehead there. Yeah, kingfish. So at the moment we've just got... We just don't know what's thousands of Thousands of kingfish schooled up probably 10 metres below the below, surface. Below this fish, when I brought it up, there was about 100 fish following it. Yeah, and I think they are both uh, Samson's below and kingfish on the yeah. top. Fishing. Remote fishing. Spearing back in the water and letting go. He's gone. Fantastic. Love it. Bill, number 101. Missed out by 30 seconds, <laughs> but we got 100 in a day, Samson's, and we've probably got another 40 yellowtail kingfish on top of that as well. And we're talking half a day here, we didn't start fishing until right. 10, it's just after lunch. Yeah. In three hours, we've caught 140 game fish. Now it doesn't get too much better than that. Yeah. I'm just soaking wet from taking fish off, falling in the live bait tank, putting jigs on, Bill, absolutely berserk. Leo over there just hooked up on a live bait and getting dragged all over the boat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You look like she looks like she's enjoying herself. But Bill, what a sensational day. Here's another one. There you go. There's number 101. What a great fish. Oh, Good Samson too. Nice fish, that's a slightly They're better. Just as big as when we started. Just fantastic. Just as big. So Oh what a day. Yeah. What a place, what a boat, what a crew. 
Thank you, David Clayfield, the skipper. Thank you, Bill Classon from AFN for organising this trip. Not a problem. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ball boys. You had what good a... fun jigging? Absolutely unbelievable fun. That's good. Never had such fun in my life. No problem. All right, we'll see you next time. It's good when you've got five or six blokes around you and you know, everyone's sort of jigging like mad and then all of a sudden everyone hooks up. Places like this, it's fishing remote places that not very many people get to fish. So it's a real test of being out in the conditions. We've been staying out here for three or four days on the boat. So it's really living in the environment, catching the fish and hoping all your gear lasts and you last. Full on action. It's just totally it's different. It's just non-stop. It's just, the minute this lure gets to the bottom, you're on. What's the best fish you caught on the trip? Um, I caught a 30, 30 kilogram Samson. 30 kilo, 66 old fashioned pounds. There you go. That's a big fish, five feet long. It was very big, it was very big. Yeah, and it tested your metal, could you say that? It certainly did, it certainly did. It was good fun. The it best is. trip you've had? Oh, by far, Bill. This is amazing. It's action all the time. You're not just sitting around waiting, you're doing something yeah. the whole time. It's such an adrenaline rush and it's so quick. You're digging away and then all of a sudden, bang and it's yep. hang on.